Ladies and gentlemen, here is the video. All right, you guys have been asking live 19 gameplay done dropped a few days ago And I haven't talked about it and I've kind of just been waiting for some more gameplay to drop just so we can get different perspectives I'm gonna talk about my opinions on the improvements made and some of the massive problems Also that still exist that are at this point generational issues with NBA live 19 gameplay This video is not sugar-coated right and if you're a live 19 fanboy and you just can't take criticism You got to go now trust me You're gonna lose your mind by the end of this video because I'm just gonna be pointing out facts when we criticize 2k on the channel We understand it's coming from a good spot. We want the game to improve But there's a subset small subset of people when I criticize NBA live 19 or any NBA live game They just like they get all like emotional like they have some sort of attachment to this game. It's a video game It's EA. They don't really care about you unless you can make them money all right, don't get so connected to these companies. All right, that's besides the point. Uh, we're looking at iPod King Carter right now. He dropped a nice little 10 minute gameplay session here. I'm gonna leave a link in the description if you guys didn't catch the entire video, but I'm gonna be going through certain points of interest. Uh, let's, let's just get into it. How about that? First off first, Live 19, I didn't know if NBA Live would ever even make progress when it came to reducing the stiffness in their animations, which is the biggest downfall with the game. A lot of people say it looks stiff. Looks weird, it's not realistic. Here we go, NBA Live 19, they said it was one of the biggest focuses, and they did it. In terms of dribbling, the stiffness looks to have been gone. Now keep in mind, I'm gonna reserve some of my opinion and judgment, because I haven't played the game, I haven't played the final version of the game, sometimes you see a game, and then when you play it, it's like a totally different experience, and so know that some of my opinion is reserved. But this is just based off what we're seeing right now. They reduced the stiffness. Dramatically now there's still cases where you're dribbling and it definitely looks stiff and you just think to yourself like damn It's still there, but it, it looks massively improved And I didn't know I'd ever see a day where I can say something like that because this has been such a massive Generational problem for the NBA live franchise for the reason why it fell off back in NBA live 10 No matter which side you were on because I was a live fanboy back in the day when I was a little kid playing on my PSP and PS2 You came to the realization real quick that like yo 2k gameplay was just better and part of the reason why was because of some of these generations issues that now they're finally putting a focus on and fixing now, I don't know what it is Maybe they don't have the talent in the company. Maybe they don't have the specific technology Maybe there's limitations with the specific engine that they're using the ignite engine But it seems like they've made marginal improvements in this category. All right, let's get into example number one here We have Kyrie Irving is right there with the ball. Do we see Kyrie right here defending him is Dario Saric and Ben Simmons uh, Man if yo ah! It should be illegal for Windows to update my PC. Illegal without my permission. They updated my laptop, or they're trying to take control of my PC. I'm not gonna let it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, if I hear one comment about how I'm sweating, I'm gonna fight you. You know I record in the sunroom. You know there's no fucking ventilation in AC. That's why I got the towel. I don't wanna hear it. All right, here we have Ben Simmons right here defending, Dario Saric right here. This is Covington, and this is also in B. So, a lot of talented defenders on the 76ers, to say the least. Kyrie Irving, in my opinion, best dribbler in NBA history. Easily the best dribble in the league right now. So, we got that in context. How is Kyrie Irving gonna finesse his way out of this specific situation in which Ben Simmons is on him and Dario Saric seems to have some considerable help defense play? Kyrie, in and out. Okay, before we move anywhere, pay attention to Dario Saric's feet. Look at his feet. He slid out of the way. This reminds me a lot of NBA 2K13 gameplay. It's what drove me crazy, is you could just slide players out the way, canned animations with posterizers, but let's not jump to any conclusions. Bro, he was slid out the way. Now Ben Simmons is there. Ben Simmons, elite defender. Kyrie looks like he's doing it in and out right now. And he puts the ball through Ben Simmons' legs. Not only that, but Embiid, even though he was right there, gets no sort of bump back animation. Kyrie, the legend himself, has finessed his way out of this situation and got himself an easy layup. If I'm the person user in the 76ers right now, I'm losing my mind. I'm chucking controllers. You have to sit there and contemplate the fact that you, you have to shell out another $60 for another controller because that should have never happened. Now, I don't know, maybe this is a very outlier case, but these flashy plays that NBA Live seems to be promoting, like check out this in and out, check out this behind the back through the opponent's legs, to me is more worrying than it is cool. In NBA Street, hey, listen bro, roll on the floor, do triple alley-oops, like it's all in good fun. But 
But when you're trying to build a simulation basketball game and you see something like that, I'm just thinking to myself how easy it is to do that. Because if I can trigger that every single time, that's what I'm doing. And that's what every game would look like. Now, considering Kyrie Irving is dribbling the ball, he is easily the best ball handler in the league right now. So there's a good possibility that only a few players in the league will be able to do this. But I assume that if you create like a ball handling player in the one game mode, then you should be able to, once you max out your player, do similar moves. I don't know. This is a point of worry for me because I don't, I don't know if this is going to be easily abusable. I know slashers were OP in the last NBA Live, and the sliders in NBA Live, if you hate 2K sliders, you will lose your mind when people hit contested shots on you in this game. So you can see some obvious clipping here. Kyrie Irving is destroying Ben Simmons in probably the most embarrassing way possible. This is looking like a Globetrotter match at this point. And there's obvious clipping, his chest is in, inside his elbow. But that happens, it's a video game, and there's gonna be situations in which there's clipping. I just hope that it's limited and that it doesn't happen often. All right, so here we go, example number two. Kyrie Irving is looking to sauce once again. The target, once again, is Ben Simmons. He's looking to dribble on this side of him and then get the ball back. Now, there's a lot of things about this that's like, oh, that's not a good look right there. One, come on, bro. Ben Simmons' wingspan is too long to not have been able to just reach out and get that ball. But I get it, sometimes, you know, you don't want stealing to be overpowered. You don't want real ball physics in a basketball game. It might make playing offense impossible. But the part that's crazy to me is how when Kyrie gets the ball back, it like magnetically connects back into his hand. It's like a canned animation. And although the play is supposed to look flashy and cool, when you look at it like this, it just kind of looks cheesy. Like just boop. <laughs> It looked like the animation, they're like, ah, I don't know how to make this work, so let's just put a magnet in Kyrie's hand, another magnet in the ball, and then have him just, you know, work things out together. All right, I get it, it looks flashy. Another example, I'm gonna be pissed off if this happens to me in a game. I'm just saying if I'm playing good defense, I really don't want the ball to go through me. Now, in that situation, and I don't know because you can't see the input, it looked like Ben Simmons might have been going for a steal. In, this, in that case, it might make sense to punish the guy for going for a steal if he didn't hit the ball. And that might be an interesting way to introduce some sort of skills gap to the game and make the game more competitive. It looks like that was what he was doing. If that wasn't what he was doing, then uh, Ben Simmons got sauced once again while he was playing good defense. Even on rookie difficulty, we got to talk about clip number four. Even if this is rookie difficulty, this play should never happen. All right, let's take a look at clip number four. Kyrie Irving calls the isolation play. It looks like they're playing some three out, two in offense. Maybe this, they're running some, whatever Aaron Baines is doing inside, I don't know. It looks like he called the isolation. Maybe he's trying to get the fuck out the way. Ben Simmons is gonna run up to defend Kyrie Irving. Once again, Ben Simmons looks like he wants to get embarrassed. So Kyrie Irving calls the iso, does the through the legs move that we just seen, that really incredibly overpowered move. And check this out. So there's two options here. Embiid is likely gonna drag over on the rotation here and play some good defense. And uh, Ben Simmons might try to return to his guy or pick up Embiid's guy who seems to be Aaron Baines. So we set the tone. Uh, this might be a problem. Let's just move forward. This is Kyrie, does a Euro step. And let's just take a look at this play now. The player in the corner that was defending, waste man, Gordon Hayward here, came to the inside. Not only that, but we have Ben Simmons who tracked down, who is incredibly lengthy and is behind Kyrie Irving. And oh, we also have Embiid, who's obviously a fantastic defensive player, ready to contest this. And it went in. I get it. Kyrie Irving does crazy sh in real life all the time. But if that hits consistently, even on rookie difficulty, I'm losing my mind. Now, if this wasn't rookie difficulty and that still dropped, like this was pro, also, I don't know what they call it NBA Live, right? Is that that play should not happen in any competitive game. All right, that being said, those are just a few issues. Some of the flashy plays got me worried. On top of that, the jump shots in the game still look weird. So I literally took out a lot of the stiffness in the dribbling and it looks a lot better. In terms of jump shots, sometimes you'll see players like James Harden's jump shot, something's just off about it. Like there's, there's no real momentum between the players and their environment. And it also shows, by the way, when the ball is reacting to the rim. The ball, when it hits the rim, almost feels like the rim is elastic, like an elastic band that bends backwards and just sends the ball flying. It doesn't feel like there's real momentum to not only the players in their environment, the, but the ball in their environment in many instances. So the stiffness is gone and to me, that's in, not entirely gone, but I think that's the biggest point, and I'm glad that that was the focus, but there's some other issues that are easily remind you that this is an NBA Live game. 
I get it. It's like yearly releases, right? And what could you do? Like, there's, you only have one year to make improvements. And in my opinion, I think gameplay is the biggest thing you could focus on when you're looking at a basketball product. And so it seems like that's what they've done. And they've made good improvements. So what more could you ask for? NBA Live 19, in my opinion, seems to be a big improvement from 18. There's some people saying it's 18.5. This looks exactly like NBA. It doesn't look like 18. This looks like an entirely new game. And I think... That's what they were trying to show off in a lot of these flashy clips in the gameplay that they sent out to some of the creators. And I get it. I get the point of those clips. They want to show that NBA Live 19 is a fun game. It's a flashy game. You're going to want to play it. You can make some exciting plays happen. I guess that's how they're trying to convert people that otherwise play 2K. NBA Live, let me tell you right now, man. You can do one thing for yourself, and it could drastically change the landscape of this franchise. Drop it free to play. Oh my, how are they gonna... EA, EA doesn't even know what free means, they didn't. <laughs> I can hear it in the comments already. I get it. This is EA. EA is not known for doing things very philanthropic. All they really want is your wallet. I get, I get the, the general consensus around EA. But NBA Live 19 with their improvements made right now, I don't think is enough to rival 2K. And I think that a lot of people who are fed up with 2K are looking for an alternative. If you make it free to play, they will have no option but to at least try out your game. And so while the game might look a certain way to the people that are judging it, I judged Fortnite. I thought I wasn't gonna like Fortnite, but it was free, so I tried it. I got addicted because it was a good game. And be alive, I'm telling you this right now. If you believe in your product, if you believe that the game you put out deserves to be played by millions of people across the world, if you want your game to blow up and you have faith in it, then you're gonna drop it free to play. Two things happen when you drop your game free to play. There's a huge surge in the user base. Now, whether the fans continue to go up or whether it goes down, it all depends on the quality of your product. But I'm telling you right now, 2K has angered so many people that there's an opportunity and the fact that NBA Live 19 is not taking advantage of it to me is crazy. So again, we heard the announcement that they will not be converting to the Frostbite engine. They will stay on the Ignite engine. And if you guys remember, when they announced the Ignite engine, the whole promise was when Madden makes an improvement, when FIFA makes an improvement, when NBA Live, UFC make an improvement to the engine, NBA Live benefits from those improvements because they all use the same engine. So I know FIFA is no longer using the Ignite engine. Now they're, of course, using Frostbite. I don't remember what UFC is using. I believe Madden is using Ignite still. And of course, NBA Live is still on Ignite. We have first heard the new announcement that Halo 5 invested in and created their own engine, specifically for that game, so that it can flourish. I don't know what the case is and I don't know what their limitations are, but I'm just saying if they believe in their game, then you know what you have to do. Yo, shout out to my guy, Broski. He uploads all kinds of NBA Live 19 gameplay. And although he has like a, I know he uploaded a video of like, Hero gameplay. It seems to have some sort of color correction on it for whatever reason. But uh, I think the gameplay he uploaded at EA Play recording the screens gives a better variety and example of what I'm talking about when it comes to jump shots, elasticity with the rim. You can easily see a lot of the stiffness is gone. You could see some weird animations when it comes to passing sometimes and it, it kind of forces people in certain directions. But that even happens in NBA 2K and that's not a problem that you're ever going to be able to fix in a basketball game. But the game does look improved without a doubt. And it's not a small improvement. It seems to be the first time in a while where I could sit here and say it's a massive improvement. But the question is, is the improvement enough? So if you wanna watch the full thing, I think it gives you a better impression than the iPod video that we were watching earlier. But it's, it's not as clear to see, so I couldn't really sit here and point out different areas. Camera's like low quality and it's chucked all over the place throughout the time. I'm gonna leave it on that. You guys wanted to know what my live 19 thoughts were. That's what it is. I'm not, I don't have any certain agenda. I don't care about, like, I don't have any affiliation with any organization. We want great basketball games. We all have different preferences and beliefs when it comes to what you want in a basketball game. We understand. But NBA Live 18, we can agree, made some improvements. Whether that is enough to warrant a $60 purchase is up to you. I think that you drop it free to play. But that's just me. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, put on post notifications. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out. Peace.